again, my name is Enoch Garcia with Honest Accounting Group, and today we're doing a T-Sheets overview of the administrator's dashboard. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So we have two sections that we're going to focus on. One is um, basically a settings and team and customer section, and then we have a few modules for day-to-day -day use. So if we go to my team, here I've entered a couple employees, they're sample employees. Uh, but let's go ahead and add one so you know what, how to process that. So here, let's add um, Mark, uh, James, and let's put a, let's, um, and a sample number. Okay. So what this allows us to do is we're creating the name so you know how to specify each individual their email address and their phone number. You can select the role here, or the administrator, worker, manager. I'm gonna go ahead and put worker. And we can invite them to create their login to T-Sheets via email or text message. So you just have to select it, highlight it, and it's gonna use this information to send the invitation. Here you can write the, um, the message to the team member. Uh, it has to be under 160 characters but this is where you would type it or leave it as is and you sit add team member it's going to load for a second and now you have mark james ready to go so this is how you add your team second we have customers so i've created three customers um these are sample customers for our purposes but all you have to do is hit add give your customer a name so let's say um uh, what do we say? Uh, roofing. Oh, let's say uh, Johnson job. Oop. Okay. And we're going to put a sample address. And basically what this is going to do is link this address to the Johnson job. That way, anytime you put the Johnson job, the address will auto populate. Hit save and we're done. So now we can access this job when we uh, clock in and out. And these are some company settings. I'm not going to get into the company settings. Um, this is a, quite a long video, so uh, I'll do it in a separate video. But now let's go to the module. So we have the time clock. What this allows you to do is clock in <clears throat> for you individually and uh, you can choose what job you're going to be working for or on. So in this case, I'm working on the Johnson job. And as you can see, the time's starting to run. And then you can just close it. Now what we have here is the scheduling module. Um, this gives us a couple options. Here we choose the month that we are, uh, or the period that we're working on. I have it set per month. But if I do per week, it'll change. And if we do it per day, the same. So March 2nd, so on and so on. I like keeping it per week. And here I've already created um, scheduling just for example, but let's create one. Let's just click on the date that we're going to schedule the employee for. <clears throat> and I'm going to say they're doing roofing. Whoops. roofing we can select a color that's up to you this is what the orange green and yellowish color is um, <clears throat> the date we selected the ninth but we can change it if it's for the 11th it'll populate here they're gonna clock in at 8 a.m. and clock out at 1 30 this is for Mark James and he is going to be working on the job the Johnson job and it auto populates here you can put any notes that you want them to know about and hit publish the moment you hit publish this send notifications box comes up this is going to send a notification of all of this information that they have to be there on March 11th at 8 a.m. Uh, to the email or phone number you entered when you created the employee so you hit send and they'll receive a text message uh, or email <clears throat> letting them know where to uh, where to be on the 11th. 
just exit out. And uh, we have um, a couple of things. Like I mentioned, we can see it per day, per week, or per month. You switch back and forth here between the week. And, um, and that's your scheduling system. So who's working? We just clocked in earlier. And since we're this is a sample file, we're the only ones that clocked in. So here you'll see the name of the employee that clocked in. And here you can see uh, the GPS of where they are located. Um, usually you'll see this when they clock in from their mobile app. That way you can see the movement of where they are. Let's see uh, who's working, time entries. So as well, we clocked in around 2.03, it's 2.06 now. And so that's still running. But let's assume just for this scenario that an employee forgot to clock in so we can add time manually for them. I'm gonna go ahead and do this for um, Mark, say James Mark. He forgot to clock in on the 5th or let's say today. He forgot to clock in today. He worked from 8 a.m. to, let's say, 1.30 p.m. So a total of five hours and a half. And he was working on the Johnson job. Any specific notes so that you can, anytime you look back, you know what happened or whatever notes you want to put there. And just hit save. <clears throat> and it auto adds them. So here I have, uh, for the previous week, I entered a lot of sample um, clock in and clock out. And since we have John Doe, Mark Doe, test name, and so on, as you have multiple employees clocking in and out, this can start looking a little messy. So what you can do is sort it by the name up here. So you just put Mark Doe, and all the Mark Doe time comes in and shows you here where they worked, the duration, uh, you can view the time and so on. If there needs, before you approve the hours, if there needs to be any editing, you can simply go to the pencil here and the box pops up and you can make the changes and hit save or you can delete the time. You have manual card here. This is a different view of how to enter the time. <clears throat> So here we can put, um, let's say that last week they worked uh, Jane Doe. And they worked eight hours. And then when we go back, now we can see Mark James manual entries for eight hours and eight hours for Jane Doe. So this is just a, a different way of viewing the time cards and entering the, the hours instead of doing the start and ending time you can just enter the total amount of hours the same process here you can go to the previous week and simply drag click and drag and it'll show what you highlighted I think the easiest way might be either entering the starting and ending times or the manual time card but whichever works uh, best for you. Um, time off, this is where employees can enter their time off requests. So you are notified that, hey, Mark Doe is requesting time off um, on the 10th of March for eight hours. So they're not gonna be working on the 10th. Uh, this allows you to communicate with the client and arrange. And then finally, approvals. So the approvals is once the period ends and it's time to approve the hours so that payroll can be processed. Here you can sort the report by week, by pay period. I recommend pay period, that way you're going pay period by pay period. So I'm gonna work on this dates from the 29th to March 6, 2020. If you wanted to see this report for a specific employee, you simply enter the name. Otherwise, it's gonna run the report for the entire team. And here we go. 
So in this example, I already approved John Doe, Mark Doe, and test name, but we just created Mark James, so I haven't approved them. So what I want to do is hit View Details, and this is going to show me, okay, he worked on the second, he worked on the third, and for eight hours, and he was working in Jane Doe. That looks right. That's what we expected. There's no errors. Let's go ahead and approve. So simply hit approve, and you're all done. Here you can look at, here you can see everybody that has hours approved for that pay period, for the pay period that we selected here. Let's run the report again. I accidentally closed it, so approved. Okay, so these are all of the hours. It's very, very simple. Simply review, view details, and it's going to show you, in this case, John Doe worked uh, on the 4th for 3 hours 40 minutes or so and Jane Doe here we have uh, Mark Doe he worked 31 hours and 46 31 hours 46 minutes for Jane Doe and 1 hour of Sean Doe's job and so on so that's how you'll see the breakdown and then we have some payroll reports the payroll reports are very similar to the approval um, by pay period, I'm going to select the same pay period, run report, and it's going to give me the details of all of the hours that were approved. And you can download this in all the approved hours, um, a summary of all of the approved hours uh, here, and it's going to export them into PDF or um, Excel. <clears throat> there are a lot of reports that you can pull. Uh, we're not going to get into the, the reports now but there's a lot of reports you can uh, just open them and read through them and see what information is uh, valuable to you so in essence the process is very simple your team is going to clock in and clock out and or you're going to schedule them they clock in and clock out and then you approve the hours so you set the schedule they show up you, you can check who's working at any given point you can start seeing the times coming in and out, in and out, day by day. And then at the end of the period, all you do is approve. So it's a very simple step, uh, process, schedule, review, and approve. Schedule, review, and approve. And then you can pull reports once everything has been approved. Of course, there's also the feature of connecting and synchronizing with QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online. That would be a whole different video. But I wanted to get you and give you an overview of how T-Sheets works. Hope this video is helpful. If you have any questions, you can contact us. And don't forget to give it a like, uh, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thank you.